Hello, I am Venanzio Gianella from University of Salerno, Italy. I am now going to present you a work in which we carried out crack propagation tests on central cracked specimens by considering the central initial, initial notch as having different angles with the loading axis. The aim of this work was to investigate the anisotropic fracture behavior of the material, that is, the aluminum lithium alloy 2198T851. Researchers started to study aluminum lithium alloys nearly 15 years ago as a possible way to reduce the weight of structures, especially within the ambition environment. These alloys can be considered as a way to substitute more traditional aluminum alloys as instances such as 2024T3. These new aluminum alloys demonstrated an anisotropic mechanical behavior, especially with reference to their first generation alloys. In this work, we intended to investigate these aspects through the typical combination of experimental tests aimed at investigating the performances of the material and numerical simulations to better comprehend the causes of the failures and to build up models for design purposes. The alloy under analysis is a third generation aluminum lithium alloy 2198 in the T851 temper. Then the metal was solution heat treated, stress relieved and artificially aged. The typical chemical composition of this alloy is here listed in this table, compared with the composition of the 2024 T3. It is worth noting that the 2198 presents a 1% of lithium that allows to achieve a 3% of weight reduction if compared to the traditional aluminum alloys. We performed uniaxial static tests by considering the geometry here shown at the bottom left corner of the slide. We can see the main mechanical properties we measured in the table at right, still compared with the 2024T3. We can see that the 2198 delivers higher performances in terms of Young's modulus, yield stress and ultimate tensor stress. Additionally, we can also see that its rolling direction seems to play a role. Lower performances were measured for the T-direction, thus when the rolling direction is perpendicular to the loading axis. We also intend to perform uniaxial fatigue tests on similar specimens for both the rolling directions. This is something we are currently performing in our laboratory. I am now going to show you in this slide what we carried out with reference to the fracture tests. This is the shape of the specimen. These were manufactured by considering, by considering the two different roll, rolling directions, then with the fibers rolled either perpendicular or parallel to the loading axis. These are the main sizes of the specimens. All specimens presented a central notch having these sizes and manufactured through EDM. We considered four different angles for this notch, as indicated by the theta angle in the figure. The loading condition consisted of a sinusoidal load having a maximum value of 24 kN, stress ratio of 0.1 and, frequencies and frequency of 10 Hz. The same load was used, was used for all tests. We tested one specimen for each combination of rolling direction and notch angle, then for a total of 8 specimens tested. Here we can see a picture of a specimen mounted onto fixture. The testing machine was a servo hydraulic testing machine equipped with a low cell of 50 kN under dynamic loading. This at right is a close up of the same specimen, where we wanted to highlight how we instrumented the specimens. In particular, here we are referring to a specimen presenting a notch angle of 45 degrees. For the first specimens tested, we glued four string gauges, two for each specimen phase so as to check the absence of secondary bending induced by the fixture. We did this only for the first specimens we tested. Whereas, for all specimens, we used crack gauges glued on the notch tips to measure the crack advancing in the first part of crack growth. After this in initial part of propagation, when the cracks propagated sufficiently, we instead stopped the tests and some thousand cycles and we took some photographs to measure the crack length. Doing this up to failure allowed us to monitor the wall crack growth. Here we can see the results in terms of crack paths. 
we are not showing the path for the zero degree specimens for the simple reason that the cracks propagated in the initial notch plane as expectable. These are the crack paths for the L rolling direction for the 30, 45 and 60 degree specimen. We can see that the cracks propagated always perpendicularly to the loading direction, irrespective of the angle of the initial notch. This was expectable, as was also expectable that the cracks propagated from the two notch tips with slightly curved and smooth paths. These are the crack paths with reference to the T rolling direction and for the notch angles 30, 45 and 60 degrees. We can see that the cracks still propagated perpendicularly to the loading axis as per the L, L direction. However, now it can be noticed that the cracks propagated straight with a mostly null curvature. Looking at the purple arrows and bearing in mind that the T-rolling direction produced grains perpendicular to the loading axis, it seems that the cracks propagated between the grains of the material as if the loading condition played only a secondary role. With reference to the crack roll rates, here we can see the experimental measurements for all specimens. At left we see the results for the L direction, while at right we see those for the T direction. First of all, it can be noticed that there, is all, there has been always a good agreement between the two crack gauges glued at the, at the two notch tips. Then, the two cracks propagated always with the same speed. We can also see that, as expectable, the higher the notch angle was, the slower the growth rate resulted to be. A high angle of the initial notch returns a low K1 value, especially for the initial part of propagation. In turn, this produces a slower crack propagation rate. Finally, we can also see that all the propagations were faster in the T direction, as if the cracks encountered a reduced material resistance along this direction. Now we are going to see the numerical simulations we performed with the commercial code Frank 3D. Frank 3D was used as a fracture dedicated code, while Abacus was used as the finite element solver. The kink angles were calculated through the maximum tensile stress criterion, and isotropic assumptions were made so far. These are only preliminary assumptions, and further improvements are already under development. At left, we can see the three crack paths simulated for the three non-null notch angles, whereas at the bottom right corner of this slide, we can see the variation of the K1 along the crack length for all the notch angles. We can see that Although the K-values are very similar among them, they are slightly decreasing with the increasing of the notch angle. Higher deviations can be noticed only at the lowest crack sizes. Based on the previous simulations, two Paris laws were calibrated, one for each rolling direction. The predictions are here shown in these charts, at left with reference to the L direction, at right for the T direction. We can see that we obtained the same trends as for the experimental observations, even though the predicted propagations are still faster than those. As said before, there is still room for some improvements in these simulations and we are confident that a better agreement can be made. To conclude, we are performing an extensive experimental campaign on this aluminum lithium alloy through uniaxial static, fatigue and fracture tests. We observed significant differences in the observations made for the two rolling directions. However, the fracture tests reported that the cracks propagated perpendicularly to the loading axis and irrespective of the angle of the central notch. With reference to the T-direction specimens, tests reported that the cracks tended to propagate in between the grains of the material and also faster than what observed for the L-direction. Thank you for your attention.